tuning in to the last age broadcast. Hallelujah. And we welcome you in to worship with us. And now we welcome you in for prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody in the sanctuary. One more day in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Some didn't make it, but now my feet is planted on holy ground. So therefore, I'll give God the highest praise. The highest praise. Hallelujah. There's no complaints in my spirit because God has took care of me all throughout the week, all throughout the year. He said he'll never change on me. Today, yesterday, and forevermore, he is the same God. Hallelujah. The altar is open for prayer. If you have to come to the altar, I promise you there's nothing too hard for God. You can lay your burdens on down. He said, cast them on me. And I'll make them light. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I have a refreshing spirit in this place. And I know some of you may have to. But we're going to go into prayer. Hallelujah. But before we go in, Lord, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, and thank you, and thank you. And hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Because hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for all that you have done. Lord God, we just want to magnify your name, Lord God. And Lord God, now as we come to prayer, as we bring the supplications to you, we cast all our burdens on you, Lord God, because you make them light, oh God. There's nothing impossible for you, oh God. And right now, oh God, we send our special prayers out to you, praying. Hallelujah. As I was reading the word last night, you prayed for us in John chapter 17. You prayed for the leaders and for those believers that's yet to come. So we ask for peace over there in that nation. And as we pray corporately, oh God, we know that you can do it in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we pray for the tornado victims, oh God. We know that families Hallelujah. Needs you, oh God. And we know that houses had a destructive path. But Lord, I know that you can rebuild. And sometimes you have to tear down the old just to bring the new, oh God. So I ask that you supply with them, hallelujah, all of the resources that they need in Jesus Christ's name. And now as we lift up your holy name, oh God, we pray, oh God, that we stay in your will. We pray, oh God, that anything's not like you, oh God, take it away. Because we want to surrender unto you. We ask that you clean our minds, clean our spirits, clean our souls, oh God. Our souls belong unto you, oh Father, in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord God, we just continue to pray for our children. Lord God, lift our children up to you. Let us be that generation that will lead them on. Hallelujah. As we teach them the same things that you have taught us in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord God, for those the people in the uh, sanctuary, oh God, that has that special prayer request, even on the broadcast, if you can lift your hands, God already knows. God has heard. He knows what's in your heart. He knows the mending of each relationship that needs to be done. He knows the burden that needs to be broken down. He knows walls that need to be destroyed. And he will rebuild them. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. We ask, oh God, that you just continue to be God. And Lord, bless the people on the broadcast, oh God. I ask right now that you soften their hearts as they tune in to this broadcast, oh God. It's all for your glory. We cast all titles to the side because we ask that the Holy Ghost come in and move. It's all for you, oh God, in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. And keep all of the first ladies and pastors lifted up as leaders. We ask for strength right now in the name of Jesus for them. Strength right now in the name of Jesus. We're asking for the workers, oh God, for your kingdom to come in and help in Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise for that prayer. Hallelujah. Five minutes of prayer. Hallelujah. will change the whole atmosphere.
say thank you. I can't help but give God glory. I can't help but give God praise. Somebody say he just keep on doing great things. I'm going to say that again. Somebody say he just keep on doing great things. Has God done any great things for you? Come on. Has God done any great things for you? He keep on making the way. He keep on opening the door. He keep on touching me. He keep on strengthening me, healing me. He keep on doing great things for me. Whereof I'm glad. I'm glad in Jesus' name that I'm going to steal this opportunity to tell God thank you once again. And the reason I say that is personal is that this month, a couple of days ago, be three years that I should have been dead. Amen. It'll be three years or it's been three years that I should have been gone. What a mighty God we serve. If somebody say having a change help from you, I continue to this day. Oh, the devil had plans for your funeral. The, the devil had plans for my funeral. But the God that we serve, hallelujah, I'm still amazed because when the doctors told me that I had had a heart attack, I told the doctors, y'all crazy. Hey. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they said, no, Mr. Bell, you had a heart attack. I said, I ain't had a heart attack. <laughs> they said, well, why do you say that? Because I've been preaching. <laughs> I've been praising, I've been worshiping. I, I've been doing, I've been making melody unto the Lord in my heart. They say, no, all the signs are there, Mr. Bell. But I wonder if your praise overrides your reality. I wish I had a witness in this house. I wonder if somebody can give God a praise that overrides their reality. He has come over and I think of a Bless the Lord this morning. I thank the Lord for it. 
is the multitude of his goodness, the multitude of his mercy, the multitude of his blessings that he has so graciously bestowed upon all of us. If you can hear me, if you can see me, if you can feel me, you know that God has been good. Amen? Amen. Has God been good? Amen. So we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And so let me do this at this moment. Let me take this opportunity to officially welcome you at home and you in the sanctuary into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let's welcome each other in. Let's give God a praise. Amen. We, we welcome you to worship. We welcome you to clap your hands. We welcome you to stump your feet, to run, to dance, to jump, to shout. Whatever you need to do, you are in a free place. You don't have to be bound. You can give God praise in this house today in Jesus' name. And so we officially welcome you to the last day's church. Amen. We welcome you to the liberty that's found from being in God's presence in Jesus' name. And I heard somebody say that the safest place is in God's will. But the happiest place is in his presence. Amen. Amen. So we welcome you. And I pray that you're welcome. I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that you are encouraged in Jesus' name and that you are motivated. And so we truly thank God for this privilege uh, and for this opportunity to be into the house and to be in the house of worship this morning in Jesus' name. And so, amen. At this time, we are going to prepare our hearts and we're going to prepare our minds to go into the Word of God. And so, I want you to prepare also for some upcoming things uh, we're working on doing uh, uh, Easter egg hunt for the children uh, in Jesus' name uh, before Easter. Uh, we're working on a couple things like that. So we want to keep you abreast in Jesus' name so that you can be attentive uh, to the things that are going on. And we need to, I met, I met a, a little girl uh, only yesterday. Uh, and she was with her parents and was taking care of business. She was 12 years old, but she was on fire for God. She made me jealous because uh, her parents were taking care of business, and she was. They were like, well, "We're going to have to come back tomorrow," and she was like, uh, "We're going to have to do that after church is over, right? after church." And I was like. And they begin to talk to me, and she began to tell me about all the different things that they do in the church, and how somebody gave them a building, and how they've built the armor, and how they're going to do this, and we sell all of these things. And I said, this little girl's leader, they said they always do everything with her. They don't do it without her coming to it. Amen. And I began to tell her, I said, sweetie, it's a blessing for you to serve God while you're young. Why? Because David says, I once was young. But now I'm on. Yeah. And what did he say? Yeah. I am. Yeah. You got to put a little emphasis yeah. on it now. Yeah. 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 So it's a beautiful thing to serve God Amen. while you're young. The Bible says it like this. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Mm -hmm. Why the evil days draw not nigh. Yes. So it's a wonderful thing to serve God while you're young. See, some of us, we came to God after we done burnt up brain right. cells and we old and <laughs> pigeon toed and can't hardly walk no more. And we come to the altar make it our way. Amen. Amen. But it's a wonderful thing to serve God in your youth. Amen. Because what happens is God insulates you from some of the trauma of the world. Amen. You know, some of us came to God with trauma Amen. because the world beat us up, chewed us up, spit us out. Amen. But I'm, I'm encouraging you, amen, that are young to start to serve God while you're in your youth. Walk with him while you're in your youth. And he will insulate you from some of the trauma that the world will put on you because the world will chew you up and spit you out. Amen. And then won't come to see about you. Amen. 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 But God, he'll carry you through in Jesus' name. So Amen. this morning, we're very grateful in Jesus' name. And I just encourage you in Jesus' name to, to keep walking with the Lord of the young age. Thank you in Jesus' name. At this time, we are going to turn our hearts towards the word of God. Uh, and it seems like as time speeds up when we come to this point. <laughs> we thank God in Jesus' name. We do we bless God. For each and every one of you that are tuned in, for each and every one of you that are in the sanctuary, can y'all just give God a 30 second praise real quick? 
Come on, let's set the atmosphere as we begin to go into the word of God. Amen. Keep also, God bless you, girl. Good to see you. Amen. Bless the Lord for you. Bless the Lord. Amen. We're going to stand. We're going to stand as we prepare to go into the word of God. And we thank the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is doing Amen. something. God is doing some yes, awesome yes. things. And we thank God for the ladies that were baptized a week or so ago. Amen. And I'm believing God that he is going to complete the work Amen. by filling it with the power Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Amen. Ghost is real. I'm going to say it. The Holy Amen. Ghost is real. And you need the Holy Ghost. You can't walk this walk without the Holy Ghost. You can't live this life without the Holy Ghost. You can try as much as you want. Amen. Amen. But you need that inner strength. You need that inner comfort, that paracletos, as the Greeks call it, that inner comfort that strengthens you, speaks to you, leads you, guides you. Amen. Amen. And so we're believing God that God is going to do that in them in Jesus' name. Amen. And he started. Amen. If you missed Wednesday night, we've been having a nice time in the Lord prayer. It may be intimate, but Amen. All, all we need is a few folk to come together Amen. and pray and believe God Amen. in Jesus' name. And he's going to do it. Uh, very quickly, I want to take this privilege. I, I told my wife on the way to church, I said, baby, I'm going to love on you all day today. Amen. So I thank the Lord for First Lady Bell in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord for her. Now for 35 years Amen. and a couple of months. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with a good grill with some sauce on it. That's <laughs> what <laughs> make you want to chew the bone. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Don't do that. And I'm saying we need to see more couples that's love each other. Amen. It needs to be put out there. That you can be saved and be married and, and, mm -hmm. and, and amen and be amen, amen, an example. Yes. Amen. So I thank God for Sister Bell. I do. Amen. In Jesus' name. And uh, just amen. I promised her today that I was gonna love on her. So I'm gonna Praise be what I say. Amen. 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 I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna buy myself. <laughs> <laughs> the other way too. All right, all right. I'm really binding myself. Oh my God. Because I know I'm an animated person. And I know sometimes animation do stuff in animation. You'd be like, what was that? My daughter says that it's overstimulating for the kids. <laughs> Next thing you know, the kids jump up and down and they're running around the house. And you try to figure out, they just want some overstimulating stuff. <laughs> Amen. They even put a warning up. They say flashes and quick movements, you know, can cause certain things. Yeah. Amen. I ain't going to move too fast. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the book of Hebrews. God bless you. I'm glad to see you go out smile. Glad to see you laugh. Jesus yeah. name. Amen. Laughter is good medicine. Laughter is good mm -hmm. medicine. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And some people are just so serious and so tense and so just on the edge. I mean, just growling at her. <laughs> at the red light. Just, come on. Just, you know, people on the edge. At least we, we have a place where we can take our shields off and, and let our guards down and just love on each other. Amen. Amen. The Bible says it like this, how good and pleasant it is for brother to dwell together in what? Unity. Amen. Amen. Oneness. Amen. We thank God. Uh, the book of Hebrews chapter number three. And I'm going to share this thought with you uh, that God has dropped on my heart. And uh, I hope that you'll be able to grasp what the Lord is saying to us. 
And so Hebrews chapter number three, and we are going to look at the 12th verse and hopefully I can get a little bit into it. We'll pick up the 13th verse because it has some insight that we need to grasp as well. But the scripture reads in the book of Hebrews chapter number three, take 312, take heed, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now let's read that together in concert, in unity with some power. Come on. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of this word. And this morning, I want to minister to you beyond belief. Beyond belief. Beyond belief. Amen. Father, now in the name of Jesus, as this word prepares to go forth, I pray now for articulation. I pray now in Jesus' name that we would be able, God, to share your thought, your insight, your wisdom, your knowledge, oh God. And Father, now in the name of Jesus, anoint us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet that we might be an apparatus and a vessel in your hand. That we might bring clarity, O oh God, to that which is obscure. That it might be lucid in the minds of your people. We bless you this morning. We praise you. And right now, we bind and break every power and we rebuke every foul of the air that they would not steal this word, that this word would land on good ground, that it would yes. bring forth, germinate, water, bud, and bring forth in Jesus' name. We thank you and we do love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We holler across the room to somebody. It's beyond belief. It's beyond belief. Beyond belief. It's a little bit unique that God dropped this in my heart. Because it's more than just believing. The issues that people have is more than just the faith issue. Uh, some of the things that we are seeing unfold yes. and yet people still won't believe. <laughs> you know what, what, what encourages me? As I see the unfolding events in the world, as I see the signs of things that Jesus told me to be aware of. It encouraged me, encourages me more to believe God at his word. Because I see his word unfolding and becoming a reality in front of my eyes. And so the things that we are seeing uh, on the news, the things that we are hearing, Wars and rumors of wars and all of these different things. These are indicators that God's word is true. Amen. 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 And yet, you have a bunch of people who still won't believe. So, that tells me that there is a bigger issue. That tells me that there is a bigger problem that tells me that there is a deeper deficiency in the minds and in the hearts of people. And what's so bad is I'm not just talking about the people in the world. It encompasses and touches the people that are in the pews. 
that is in the sanctuary. So it is beyond belief. And so let me let me calm myself down because I was a little bit animated on the way to church. <laughs> but I thank God for my animation. You know why I thank God for my animation? I don't need nobody else to make me get happy. I don't need nobody else for me to worship God and to lift God up. I can have church all by myself. I can get happy all by myself. I can go into worship all by myself. Because I have been animated by the Spirit of God. Somebody that got the Spirit of God, just tell God, thank you right now. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your strength. Come on, I wish I had a witness of this heart. Thank you for what you've already done. It has the ability to animate me when it looks like you ain't doing nothing. Mm. No, no, no. Let me let me get into some word because I, I call myself a student of scripture, so let's look at what the word says. In verse number 12, in chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews, the writer, and I say the writer because historically the writer of Hebrews is not known absolutely. Uh, a lot of people will attribute it to the Apostle Paul, but that is theory that is imposed and not verified. And so I say that because oftentimes we get in trouble when we go further or farther than the word says. <laughs> I noticed I had to do a geological adjustment just then. Because to some of y'all from the east, it was farther. <laughs> For some of y'all people below the Mason Dixie, it was further. <laughs> I'm learning how to adjust. <laughs> but he says something, and I'm feeling right good this morning, first lady. I am. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's a good thing. He says in Hebrews chapter 3, take heed. And whenever you hear the term take heed, it is indicative of an imposing danger. It identifies, it is like the word beware, which I brought out on uh, Wednesday afternoon in Bible class, that whenever you see beware or take heed, it is a warning that there is a present danger and that if you don't pay attention it could be detrimental to your future and so he says take heed whenever the scripture tells you to take heed you need to slow down and you need to pay attention to what's being said. And so he says, take heed. And this is not the first time that he said this in the book of Hebrews. He's already said it in chapter number two. If you go to chapter number two and you look at the first verse, he says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest Heed to the things what which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Oh uh, my God, if, if there's ever a time for you to hold on and to take heed to what God has already said, 
Now is the time. If there's ever a time for you to pay attention, to slow down, and to proceed with caution, because that's what take heed literally means. It, it means that you need to slow down and you need to go forward with caution, meaning that you need to be sober and vigilant. You need to be paying attention to what's going on around you, because there is an impending danger that is in the presence of where you are right now. Ah, God. And so, uh-huh. So he uses the Greek term pros echo. It is spelled P-R-O-S-E-C-H-O. -P and it means to hold in mind. So whenever, whenever you hear take heed, he is saying you need to hold this in your mind. And, and also it says you need to pay attention. I, gotta, I don't like people who don't pay attention to what's going on around them. I, gotta, I, don't, I don't like to be with people who are so caught up in the moment that they don't pay attention to their surroundings. Oh, praise the name of our God. I, I got to just tell the truth. Growing up in the city, growing up in the hood, growing up on the wrong side of the tracks has taught me to pay attention. I don't care where I go. I don't care where I am. I'm going to survey the area and find out what are the exit points. Find out what's going on around me because if you're going to get me, you're going to have to come with everything that you got because I'm not slow. I'm doing what the Bible says. I'm watching what I'm praying. I wish I had a witness in this house. Somebody clap your hands and tell God thank you. And tell somebody right now, how across the room, you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention to what's going on. You need to pay attention to the news. You need to pay attention to your spirit. You need to pay attention to the preacher. You need to pay attention to what God is saying. Because if you don't, there is a pending danger that's there. He says, be cautious. And I said this. Oh, God, I preached the message a little while ago. It was entitled, I'm conscious, but I'm cautious. With other words, I, I see what's going on. I see what's happening. I see what's unfolding, but I'm paying attention because it ain't going to catch me off guard. If you are a born again believer, if you are a blood washed, sanctified, holy concealed believer, Oh uh, God, what's going on? Shouldn't catch you off guard. Uh, oh, praise the name of our God. You ought to be paying attention. So he tells us in chapter 2 to give the more earnest heed. Sedulous. Earnest. To be more attentive. To the things which we have heard. Can I tell you some of the things that I heard have brought me to this day. Some of the things that I've heard have kept me when I didn't know how I was going to be kept. Y'all better say something to me. Some of the things that I heard we take for granted. That we get good teaching. We take for granted the word that comes across this sacred desk. But this word is what causes me to have breakthrough. This word is what causes me to have peace when I'm in the middle of turbulent situations. It says that I can have peace, amen, that passive understanding. It ain't no way that I should be in a peaceable place when I live in hate. Y'all better say something to me. It ain't no way that I should have peace and there's turbulence going all, all around me. But the reason that I have peace is because I'm holding on to what I heard. What did he say? I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. I'll tell somebody, hold on to it. Oh. Come on, tell somebody, holler at them, hold on to it. Don't let nobody pull you away from it. Don't let nobody take it out of your spirit. Don't let what unfolds and what happens and then push you in the corner. Hold on to the peace of God. Be 
because we can't let it slip. Yes, yes we can. Yes. We can't let it slip. Yes, yes. Uh, mm. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you, you know why you got to pay attention? There was an old group that wrote a song. The group was called War. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, some of y'all telling them y'all self. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But they wrote a song, Slipping Into Darkness. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on, man. <laughs> and a current bass player by the name of Marcus Miller redid right. the song. Oh, it's funky. <laughs> <laughs> it's funky. Yeah. But the message is the same. Yeah. You got to pay attention to yourself because you can slip into darkness. If you don't pay attention to what you heard. Yeah, yeah. Beyond belief. Mm -hmm. So we are in Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to get to verse 12. So he, he warns us and he tells us. Take heed. Wait, wait, wait. Take heed. Brethren. Mm -hmm. He is not talking to the world. He is talking to you. Who have named the name of Christ. He is talking to you. Who say that you've been saved. He is talking to the brethren. The people who make up the body of Christ. See the world ain't got to pay attention. It's the church that needs to pay attention. The world ain't got to pay attention. It's the believer that needs to pay attention. Mm. And then it gets deeper. I ain't in no hurry. I'm not. Y'all preached to me for years. Series, series, series. Well, you got it now. <laughs> now don't be insatiable on me. <laughs> don't be insatiable on me. You got asked for it. Did you get it? Oh, that ain't what we want. <laughs> if you live to be to please people and to have their acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. Did you catch what I just said? You live for people and you got to have their acceptance and their approval. You will die from their rejection. Oh, yeah. How many people and kids need counseling now? Okay. Because they got a hundred dislikes and they thought it was gonna be likes. <laughs> we we boy, they, we everybody got an opinion on everything today. You shouldn't have worn that blue with that. Yeah, yeah. Did I ask you? Why? <laughs> Your opinion can get you no pancakes at it. I, 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 I. I got it. Mm. Okay. Bind myself. Let me say. Take heed, brother. Why? Why do I need to pay attention? Why do I need to be cautious? Why do I need to keep the center in mind? He brings it out in verse 12. Least there be in any of you an evil heart. Of what? How is it possible that I can be born again and know God and have his spirit but have an evil heart? That's an oxymoron. They don't go together. An evil heart of unbelief. Is this possible? Of course it is. How many of y'all have seen God work? Amen. Amen. 
How many uh, have seen God move, seen God show up, seen God rewrite the report, seen God deliver, seen God open door? But yet, still have a hard time believing him for where you are right now. And this troubles me because it's beyond belief. Did you catch what he said? You have an evil heart. It's not just that you don't believe. Your heart is evil. Oh, I know you don't want to hear this. But I'm going to make it plain for you. So it is possible for you to disbelieve God and God look at you through an evil lens. You say, oh, Pastor, uh, the Bible said it. I didn't. Oh, God, let's, let's, let's go further. Uh, let me just give you a historical element. You remember when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt? And you remember how God, through the hand of Moses, worked plagues and miracles in the sight of Pharaoh. But let me, let me tell you, show you the duality of that lens. The duality of that lens is that not only did he work those miracles in the sight of Pharaoh, he worked those miracles in the sight of the people that he was bringing out. So, in essence, when you look at what God does, yes, you have to look at what he did in front of the enemy, but you also have to see what he did in front of the belief. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So, look at what the Bible says in the book of Numbers. I ain't going to go there. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, as a point of reference. The, look at what happened. God got upset and God got mad at the children of Israel and Moses had to intercede on their behalf because God was getting ready to smoke them. God was getting ready to take them out. God told Moses, move out the way. Let me take them out. I will make of you a great nation. I will make of you a great name. And thank God for leaders like Moses. Thank God for people who are not caught up in they say. Thank God for people who have a panoramic view and a panoramic perspective of who God is and what God wants to do. So in other words, Moses went to God and he cooled God's anger off. God, Moses began to use psychology on God. Moses said that if you take them out, they're going to say that you weren't able to deliver them. If you take them out, they're going to say that you didn't have the power to bring them out. Oh, but how many of y'all know that the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask to think according to the power that works in us? God has the power. But it made God angry. What is it that made God angry? The level of their unbelief. What did he say in Numbers 14? He said, these ten times have you provoked me. You done seen me part the sea. You done seen me turn water in the blood. You done seen me sit down by the well ten times and you still don't be oh, I'm getting ready to mess with y'all. Some of y'all were sick and should have been dead and he healed you. You done seen me. Some of y'all oh, man, you should have been found. And, oh my God, and he opened the door and set you free these ten times. So what does that tell me? It's beyond just belief. What does it tell me? It tells me that there's a deeper underlying issue. Because faith is not that difficult. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. 
You done heard enough that if you don't hear no more, you ought to be able to be saved for the rest of your life. You got to give heed to what you heard. Somebody say real quick, you heard, you heard, you heard. What have you heard? Sometimes you got to grab what you heard when you can't hear nothing in the moment. Oh, my God. Somebody give God praise for what you heard. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, You heard? That's right. <laughs> he don't get weary. You heard? Amen. There is no searching of his understanding. Amen. You heard? Amen. Have you heard? Wait. Amen. Tell somebody, wait. Just, just wait. Oh, God. I'm, I'm going to ordain you right now to minister. Tell him, just wait. Stretch out your hand towards him and say, wait. Just, just wait. Don't move. Don't jump. Don't jump, jump out the frying pan and get the fire. Just wait. Wait on the Lord and be in good courage. And be so still in your heart. Wait on the Lord and say again. Oh my God. Have you heard that they that wait on the Lord, that he shall renew that strength, that they're going to mount up on wings of the eagle, that they're going to run and not be with me, that they're going to walk. Just stop. Somebody just need to wait. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Wait, watch him come and rest in you. Watch him open the door. Watch him put the enemy under your feet. Watch him turn it around. Watch him work a miracle. Tell somebody just wait. Just Just wait. Just, just wait. Just wait till I come out of this. Just just wait to it, sir. Just, just wait to the power. Just wait to what God does. But the reality is, disbelief can turn into evil before God. Beyond relief. Beyond belief, excuse me. Let me take you somewhere. So one of the underlying issues is heart issues. Some people got heart issues. The physical heart is working fine. But the spiritual heart is messed up. Oh yeah, the physical heart is pumping and the arteries are working, but the spiritual heart has blockage. Yes. The spiritual heart has buildup. Mm. Some of the things ain't opening so it can't flow the way that it needs to flow. Heart issues. Mm. Heart issues are very serious. From a natural perspective, our heart is one of the main organs that allows us to live. And if we have damage to our hearts, it has the ability and the propensity to affect everything else in our body. Sometimes when the heart don't pump adequately, the flow ain't good. And when the flow ain't good, the stuff that is dependent upon the flow is negatively affected because the flow can't reach it. Amen. What kind of things are 
dying in you now because of heart issues. This is unrehearsed. I didn't rehearse this. Let me take you somewhere. Let's go, you've heard it before, to Proverbs chapter 4. You haven't heard it? But I want to tell you, and y'all hold your book with your finger in Hebrews because I'm going to try to get back there. I already done told you there will be part two next week. I ain't in no hurry. Sometimes we rush through stuff and we're missing the good part. Amen. Some people don't know how they enjoy the moment. Amen. It's the best part of the movie. What you rushing for? Hello? Amen. This is the sweetest part of our fellowship. What you rushing for? Hello, this is what I've been looking for. Amen. Why am I rush through it? Amen. You enjoy the nice meal and the ambience is nice and you're looking into your husband's eyes and he's looking into your eyes and she smells good and so and so and so and it's just a wonderful setting. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking about first lady. She done did it before, but I want to talk about it this time. <laughs> Shama, I need God to be here right now. Proverbs chapter 4. You've heard it. 23, what does it say? The Hebrew word here for keep is nasar. N-A-S-A-R, nasar. He tells you to keep it, but to watch your heart. To guard your heart. And to maintain your heart. Why? Because come on, come on, y'all read it. That's a powerful statement. I got to keep it. I got to watch it. I got to guard it. I got to maintain it. Why? It's because out of it every dimension of my life can be affected yes. by what happens to my heart. Yes. Some people that join, they like the three stooges. They not join women at this club. Because <laughs> some girl opened your nose, blew your mind, and then left you there. Walked away from you. I'm an equal opportunity uh, preacher. Do you know you got some girls that's players and gangsters too? <laughs> yeah, I would, I'm like Eddie Murphy. I would rather not deal with a girl gangster. I would rather not deal with a girl who got more game than you got. Because she'll open your nose, bat her eyes, you give her your whole wallet. And then she'd tell you, I ain't in love with you. <laughs> we was just kicking it. <laughs> oh, well, I wanted you to be my mama. <laughs> Carol, I was getting ready to take you to be big mama. <laughs> and she, well, I, you know, I ain't really ready to meet your family. <laughs> I was going to give you something. Don't get on your knee, boy. Get up. <laughs> I ain't ready for that. <laughs> and it ain't nothing like a brother that done had his heart broke. I know something. You know, they told me, Bell, that's why I do what I do now, man. I love the sister. I gave her my money. I did everything. Did she did me like this? That's the recipe for a dog. And I ain't talking about an atomic dog either. Hello? 
I know somebody like that. They told me, Bell, I'm like this now because I was in love. I gave her my heart. I gave her my money. I did everything I was supposed to do. And she dogged me out. You know what he told me? I'm dogging everybody I come in contact with. I ain't lying. He like that to this day. Keep your heart. Yes. Protect your heart. Yes. And let me say something to you. Be selective mm -hmm. on who you share your heart with. Because everybody that you share your heart with does not have the ability to deal with the intricate the intricacies of your heart. Amen. The textures of your heart. Amen. Hello? Yeah. Oh my God. The only way, way you can get to the true level of intimacy and I'm not talking sexuality. I'm talking into me see. I'm talking about intimacy. The only way you can get there is that you got to have somebody who can deal with the roughness and the texture and the tenderness of your naked heart. Because if I cannot trust you with my heart, we, you, we'll never get to the realm of true intimacy. Because I'm not going to let you see past what's in front of you because I realize you don't know how to handle the essence of who I really am. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this. So you got to keep your heart. You got to guard your heart. You got to protect your heart. Because why? Out of it, the rest of my life is going to be affected. Mm. And you got to be careful that when you've had trauma, you don't let the trauma cancel your beauty. Did you catch what I just said? When, when you have had impact from a negative perspective, you don't let the impact of that negativity change you to a negative position. It's very difficult to do. How you do it? You got to guard it. You got to protect it. How you do it? You got to maintain it. What? You got to keep yourself in the love of God. You got to make sure that you allow the love of God that God has shed abroad in your heart to be made manifest through the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. Let me move. Let me move. Let me move. Uh, so you got to protect your heart. Tell how across the room, protect your heart. Protect your heart. Protect your heart. Ooh, I'm getting ready to say something. I'm getting ready to say something. Oh. You can't tell grandma anything. You can't tell your mama everything about your wife. Much as I love my mom. Amen. <laughs> With her red velvet from scratch cooking cell. <laughs> you watching this Mar Sydney one. <laughs> she do it. FedEx. She do it. FedEx ring bell. Got a package from Betty Bell, Detroit, Michigan. It's a red velvet cake. Can't toe up. <laughs> the frost in his heart. It's <laughs> stuck to the box. And my wife and my mom use real. She she making some scratch. You better not drop no that cake on your beige carpet. <laughs> you can clean it for days. We got one of them cakes one time. Mother cake was toe up. <laughs> Prophet Hardy said, <laughs> Sister uh, cutting in. Prophet, oh, we ain't worried about that. <laughs> he said, we gonna tear it up anyway. Just cut me in peace, bitch. <laughs> he said, we know my bell got this cake together. Cake done been through I talk about on the airplane. They done tossed it on the porch, all kinds of stuff. 
Frosting is up. We scraping the bottom. That's good. Give me some more, bitch. I was saying this as much as I love my mom. I cannot share with her every issue Amen. that is in my personal relationship. Amen. 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 That's true. And you don't need to do it either. Amen. Because what happens, I'm trying to help you. I'm helping you. I'm trying to help you. Because what happens, and it ain't got to just be, you, you have to be very selective on who you share your heart with. Because what happens, sometimes you might share the impact of your heart. And you get through the impact and you get to the healing of your heart. And the healing of your heart has restored the relationship. But the person that you shared it with is stuck in the impact. And so while you are going forward in the healing, they stuck in the impact. And they drive you back to the impact every time they talk to you. Oh, that was good. That was good. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Let me take you from it. So you got to keep your heart. Uh, come on, come on. Now, it don't take long for you to interact with people before you can tell whether or not they got a good uh -huh. or a bad heart. Uh -huh. Look, I ain't even finished. <laughs> 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 it wasn't even out my mouth yet. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. But is it the truth? It does not take long for you to be able to determine the condition of some people's heart. Do you know some people got a bad disposition. Yeah. You work with some of them. Oh, yeah. Some of them your manager. Yeah. Some of them your boss. They got a bad disposition. Always angry. Oh, some of them is in here now. <laughs> I don't want to look at nobody. I ain't trying to get nobody away. <laughs> but it's true. <clears throat> Let's go real quick. Let's do a couple a couple things real quick. Let's do Matthew chapter 12. Beyond belief. Sometimes people got heart issues. As much as we see God doing, we still won't believe. As much as God has showed up and showed out, we still won't believe. As much as I see his word being manifest on my TV, we still won't believe. Hmm. It's beyond belief. It's a deeper line issue. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. I ain't got time to go through all of it, but let me try to hit you with a little bit. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 33. And let, let's do this because it, 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 it brings it out for us. So Matthew 12, 33 through 35. What does it say? Ain't that self explanatory? Yeah. He said, make a choice. He said, either make it good or make it bad. Because there is no way, listen to this, there is no way for a healthy tree to produce bad fruit. Because if you nurture the soil, you cultivate it, you do everything you need to do, you give it the sun that it needs, the water that it needs, you create a, a, a salubrious environment, an environment, amen, uh, that is conducive to health, good air, good water, you create a salubrious environment, there is no way for that tree to produce bad fruit. 
Oh, Lord. Unless the seed has been contaminated before it was planted. Amen. You know we're living in a modern society where they do engineering on food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to buy some grapes that taste like cotton candy? <laughs> yes, it's against nature. You ever had some? Huh? What do you think a seedless watermelon is? They don't mess with the seed. It's been engineered. Some of y'all don't even care. Give me some clone meat. <laughs> you trying to figure out why you in the kitchen how? It's been altered. And the problem is, sometimes we go too far messing with nature. Oh, God, I ain't going to jump that fence. Sometimes we go too far trying to edit nature. If nature needs any corrections, nature has the ability to correct itself. Does it not? Yeah. Look at nature. Look at nature. Nature has a perfect balance. Nature knows what it's doing. Lilies ain't too yellow. Hello? Oh, God. Let me move. So he says this, verse 33, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. Oh, God, and I told y'all on Wednesday night, if you ever want to hear somebody call some people some names, wait till Jesus start calling folks names. Yeah. And Jesus don't hold back. What does he say? Oh, generation of vipers. I told y'all how somebody did me. I wanted to call them a snake some bad. <laughs> It was a jacket. The Holy Ghost was sitting on me. Don't say that, Bill. Don't say that, Bill. Don't say that. Oh, Old generation of vipers. How can ye what? Speak good things. Come on. Oh. So now we're getting a little bit of insight. Let me let you let me let you in on something. They said it, they mean it. They said it, they mean it. Oh, I didn't mean to say uh -huh. Because you the Bible just told you, out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? It'll come out your mind. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't really what I was going to say. Hello? And what's so bad, Captain? I use this analogy all the time. You can't keep cutting off my fingers and saying you sorry. And now all I got is a thumb. And you saw, but my fingers is gone. You done hurt and cut me so much that I've lost the ability to do certain things. Because you done cut off all my fingers. All I got is a thumb, and I want to lay this thumb on you. <laughs> but you saw. So, you got to watch. What's in your heart? See, y'all thought I was going to say, you got to watch what come out your mouth. It ain't coming out the mouth. It's coming out the heart. Huh? All right, let's move. 
they did it. And the brothers of the heart of my speaking, I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. Um, verse 35, what does it say? The Greek term for good is kalos. It's good. It's proper. It's upright. He says, a good man what? You can't be a good man and have a bad treasure in your heart. It's practical. So it's beyond belief. It's beyond belief. You, you can't be a good person and have a bad heart. Mm. You can't have a million dollar vision and running around with two dollar people. You, you can't do it. Somebody was acting up the other day and they was talking to me about birds. Somebody saw a bald eagle over there where I work at. And I say, they say, I saw a hawk. And we got to talking about birds. And they said, Tim Bell, they said, Tim Bell, we seen a bald eagle. I said, you seen two of them in one day. They said, what are you talking about, Tim? I took my hat off. I said, bald eagle. They said, that's pretty good. You don't see eagles in clusters. Amen. They don't hang around dodo birds or chickens. Every time you see chickens, what are they doing? Clucking and pooping. They clucking and they pooping at the same time. What you see? A trail. So if you can look behind you and see a trail of mess, why are you still hanging out with the who don't want nothing out of life. What y'all doing eight in the morning, chilling? <laughs> y'all know, we ain't been saved all our life. You know we used to drink 40 ounces at nine in the morning. You know if you drink a 40 at nine in the morning, you're going to be drunk to two o'clock. At least. Because it lingers longer. You ain't got the faculty together. You smoking bud the first thing in the morning. Brain just... <laughs> What you think about Captain Crunch? That's all I can think about. <laughs> all right, let me finish this. Let me finish this. Okay. <laughs> so he says this thirty-five. A good man, what? And an evil man out of the evil treasure. Treasure, the Greek word is thesaurus. Just like a thesaurus, the book, mm -hmm. the Greek term is thesaurus. It means wealth. There are some people who only find interest in evil things. Is it possible? And I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing. Is it possible? To be a Holy Ghost filled believer, mm -hmm. but yet have heart issues. Yes, yes, yes. And, and we're going to get back to it according to Hebrews an evil heart, yes. unbelieving. And what is the result? I'm going to deal with the result later, but I got to say this. The result is, is that you depart from the living God. And so, what I'm saying to you, the reason I bring uh, take heed back before you is that we are living in times when you're getting ready to see a lot of people who are walking with God walk away from God departing from the living God beyond belief so I love you this morning God bless you I pray that you got it I pray that you got something out of it I pray that you understand you know, I, I pride myself on being an optimistic person. I love people. 
I will try to give you the benefit of the doubt. I will try to be gracious with you when you're having an issue or going through something and see the good in you. I'll give you another chance. Hello? But sometimes people get on my nerves. And I'll be wanting to say, smoke them, God. Put it on them. Teach them. I ain't no punk. Because I can't teach them. Because if I teach them, we go into jail. Somebody going to have to come bail me out. If I teach them now, I got a record now. And y'all know, can't be no good preaching with a record like that. Because <laughs> I found out, Mother O'Neill, the saints don't forgive like God. There you go. 20 years ago, that's him. The saints don't. <laughs> don't you get it twisted? The saints are speaking tongues and jump up a few and run down the aisle, but they don't forgive like God do. I told you. She was married. That was 30 years ago. Anyway. So take it for what it's worth. Take it for what it's worth. Take heed. Proceed this week. Proceed the rest of your life. Proceed the rest of this year with caution. Pay attention to what's going on around you. My, my wife sometimes, she says, I don't want to watch this. I come home, I want to see what's going on in the world. Yes. It, just give me 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let me get an assessment of what's going on right now. And I want a panoramic view. I don't want to just find out what's going on in Britain. I want to find out what's happening in Syria. I want to know what's going on in Israel. I want to know what's happening in China, the UK. I want to know why. Because it gives me a global perspective of what God is doing. Then I can assess it in line of scripture. And so I do that so that when I come to the place, I'm not moved by the things that transpire. Instead of being moved, I'm actually anchored because I already read that it was going to happen. Amen. 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 So I love you. God bless you. Listen, I, I'm wondering, is there anybody that want to be baptized? Is there anybody that want to go down in the wonderful name of Jesus? We took some people down a couple weeks ago. The pool is ready. We got clothes. We'll cover up your hair in Jesus' name. And you can be baptized today in the wonderful name of Jesus. And that's what salvation is about. It's about dealing with your sins, getting you to the place that you can be reconciled to God. Amen. You cannot come to God or, or you cannot stay where you are and come and, and think that everything's going to be all right with you and God. Look at what God says. God says in the book of Isaiah, he says, come, let us reason. Yes. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash them. Yeah. That's why the snow. That's it. He wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to purge you, purify you. And then he wants to give you his spirit. His spirit is him living in you that causes you, amen, to have a genetic transfer. What do I mean by genetic transfer? By getting his spirit, you get his DNA. And when you get his DNA, his DNA will reproduce his traits in you. Amen. Mm. You call yourself a son of child of God. Everybody used to say, oh, take a blood test. Now we do DNA test, baby. Because blood tests weren't efficient. We found out some people who took a blood test, they said it was and it wasn't. So now we do DNA. Dioxyribonucleic acid. DNA. Divine nature anointing. It is who God is living in you. His DNA. And you need to have it. So I love you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Pray. I'm praying for you. If anybody want to be baptized, let me know. If anybody want to join last night's church, let me know. But at this time, we are going to prepare and we are going to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Let's give God a praise to those of you that are home. We love God for you. We thank God for you. We bless God for you too. Come into the sanctuary. We're open. 
Hey, we're open. Amen. Come be with us in Jesus' name. So we're going to prepare to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. If you're there and you want to sow a seed, you can go to Giblify. Amen. You can download Giblify. You can uh, 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 fill out the application, do what you need to do, and then you can become a faithful giver to Last Saints Church. I'm going to tell you something. We are in covenant with God. Not only do we give our tithes, we also give an offer. We bless God according to his riches, how he has blessed us. Amen. So let's give today in Jesus' name. So God bless you, those at home. Heaven smile upon you till we meet again. Myself, First Lady Bell, we miss you and we love you in Jesus' name. Let's give God the praise as we prepare to give an offering today.